Why Ethics, Virtues, and Morals Matter, Part 1. The Definition of Ethics Moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Synonym terms include moral code, morals, morality, values, rights and wrongs, principles, ideals, standards of behavior, value system, virtues, and dictates of conscience. The etymology definition is the science of morals, 1600, plural of Middle English Ethic, study of morals, see ethic. The word also traces to ta ethica, title of Aristotle's work. Etymology, definition of the word moral, mid 14th century, pertaining to character or temperament, good or bad, from Old French moral, uh, 14th century and directly from Latin moralis, proper behavior of a person in society, literally pertaining to manners, coined by Cicero de Fato to translate Greek ethico, see ethics, from Latin mos genitive moris, I'm terrible Sorry if I'm not saying that right. One's disposition in plural mores, customs, manners, morals. I looked up some information about Cicero, and I think it's a little interesting to add that Cicero was a Roman politician and lawyer who served as consul in the year 63 BC. Defato, Latin for concerning fate, is a partially lost philosophical treatise written in 44 BC. In the work, Cicero analyzes the concept of fate and suggests that free will is a condition of fate. When I have much less to look into, I will read through the de facto English translation I found. I'm curious about it. A politician wrote a philosophical work about free will way back when. I'll be sure to read more into who the author was as a person. I already know that not all politicians here in the USA Incorporated have been selfish and uncaring about what's been right and wrong. Many voluntarists, anarcho-capitalists, free market libertarians, like what former politician Ron Paul has talked about, in aiming to help warn people about our current economic crisis and perpetual warfare, not doing anyone any good, he's persistent. He really is. He's determined to stand up for liberty up to his last breath. So am I. Knowing what I've been learning and researching, I would find it careless and foolish just to keep beneficial knowledge to myself. This knowledge deserves to be spread. Ron Paul has said, ideas are important to the shaping of society. In fact, they are more powerful than bombings or armies or guns. And this is because ideas are capable of spreading without limit. They are behind all the choices we make. They can transform the world in ways governments and armies cannot. Fighting for liberty with ideas makes more sense to me than fighting with guns, politics, or political power. With ideas, we can make real change that lasts. I very much agree with this statement. Remember, dearies. Voluntary interactions and the evolution of sharing good ideas with one another are free, but government power comes at a steep price. Not only does it cost so much money to wield government power, 
but also it costs us our free will and our consciences. This reliance on power to control each other suppresses our capabilities to seek opportunities to do far more beneficial and productive things without the use of aggression. Yes, it is possible for people to be free and then some other um, corporation would step in to take control now. But what if people could be given chances to see information that both encourages and challenges them to question what they were taught to believe? That is what the internet is for right now. And that is why certain books exist. There are other books besides Educating for the New World Order by Beverly K. Ekman, in which explains how bureaucrats and private organizations such as the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have bent and broken civil laws behind families' backs within the public school systems. Psychological warfare is still being used to manipulate teachers to teach what the federal government wants them to teach. That's called the Delphi Technique. I will link to the video in which I first talked about the Delphi Technique. There are more than books that mention about psychological warfare that exists within corporatism and how to build mental defenses against that, such as Mind Manipulation, Ancient and Modern Ninja Techniques by Dr. Ha Ha Lung and Christopher Prowant. Isn't that a strange name, Dr. Ha Ha Lung? <laughs> I gotta say, someone with a name like that must have a sense of humor. <laughs> Continuing on. There are also good books that bring up human morals and teach good lessons to children, for example. Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli was one of the books I read when I was a kid. And here is the summary of this book that I found on the Scholastic website. He wasn't born with the name Maniac McGee. He came into this world named Jeffrey Lionel McGee. But when his parents died and his life changed, so did his name. And Maniac McGee became a legend. Even today, kids talk about how fast he could run, about how he hit an inside-the-park frog homer, no, how no knot, no matter how snarled, would stay that way once he began to untie it. But the thing Maniac McGee is best known for is what he did for the kids from the east side and those from the west side. He was special, all right, and this is his story, and it's a story that is very careful not to let the facts get mixed up with the truth. Yeah, the themes in this book cover homelessness and racism. It's anti-racism. I still have the entire Animorphs series by K.A. Applegate. They take up the bottom row of my bookshelf. This series covers a variety of topics that enslaving the human race would be horribly wrong, painfully obvious, how most animal behaviors and instincts are compared to that of our human animal behaviors and instincts, and how ongoing warfare changes people in not so good ways through the perspective of a small group of teenagers. This series tends to get dark towards the end, very much so, but I would still reread them, you know, when I have less to read. I always have too much to read. That's one of the things about being a book lover. From all of these books that I have read, in big ways and small ways, they have helped to expand my mind, to add on to what I already knew concerning on what has been going on in this world. If I hadn't read the first two books I've mentioned, then I certainly would have never known or, or taken any interest to research 
further on how awful and inhumane the political process is and why we need to evolve within ourselves to improve how we live and how we decide to do things. If you don't usually like to read, then please look up Beverly K. Ekman on YouTube. She's a whistleblower and former teacher. There's a video in which she explains about the Delphi Technique, the first part of six. I will link in the description box below. Yes, I know there will always be bad people, of course. We could never defeat evil. But could we suppress evil by using, quote, necessary evil? How could we defeat oppression with oppression? How could we end racism and hate in using racism and hate? Does it really depend on which brand of government, monopoly of force, is used by just the right people in just the right way to maintain failures of civilizations? How could any of that logically and ethically work out? How does divide and conquer unite? How could going backwards help you move forward? Hate, self-centered fear, narcissism, and ignorance hinder individuals from wanting to evolve from within. These negatives keeps them close-minded. This leaves the proverbial door open to any bad person to influence, manipulate, and enforce tyrannical policies. Curiosity, optimism, courage, and determination within a morally consistent path that leads to open-minded people. It's through these people who develop and explain ideas that don't involve violence and oppression. Anyone who tells you that such ideas are not to be taken seriously or that heeding the words of voluntarists would lead to chaos and mayhem aren't very bright. Ignorance may be bliss, but for whom? Answer. Those in power who rely on people to stay ignorant so they can easily hold meetings behind closed doors, discussing about gaining more power for themselves while discussing how to trick people into wanting to do that for the sake of their own safety in exchange for giving up more and more of their liberties. I'm not aiming to be condescending here. I don't intend to seek power for myself, knowing it is selfish and cowardly to want power and control over others, because I know and understand that people own themselves. I own myself. Don't you own yourself? I'm only pointing out what does not make sense to me. A statist once said to me that putting up with what you'd personally view as wrong and corrupt is called, quote, being an adult. Well, how's that working out? <laughs> Are most adults happier in life than they were as kids? Maybe that's why the social justice warriors tend to act childish and demand respect by being addressed by their own pronouns because they don't want to grow up to be miserable adults. I'm saying that it could be a possibility on why some of them behave the way they do. Or maybe I'm overthinking on that bit. What do you think? Let me know. Not everyone grows up the same way, and not everyone thinks in the same way, yet there are many who want to impose and enforce what they want onto everyone else. We may not agree on everything or get along with everyone, and not everyone wants to attack each other all the time, yet our options get fewer and fewer for most in a one size that doesn't fit all system. Why would anyone need to have permission to be free. If people are supposedly so stupid and negligent to be rational and honest, then how can they be smart and dedicated enough to vote for the right person to represent them and be in charge of a nation? A civilized and peaceful society must have people who are both compassionate and intelligent. One virtue without the other brings disaster. 
and I've said this in a previous video of mine, one virtue without the other brings disaster. Right now, there are people who care but don't know any better, such as cops, SJWs, Antifa, and there are heartless geniuses such as banksters, the CIA, Congress members, television media corporations who support and keep quiet about crimes the other heartless geniuses commit. Guess which side tends to easily mislead and manipulate the other to do crazy and destructive things? If you want governance, then why not try self-governance? If you're not allowed to just be yourself and be 100% in charge of your own life, with a lack of understanding on what's good and what isn't, then you might want to invest time for yourself to think about what it is you personally and specifically advocate, what you believe, your core beliefs. What do you think? Is this all meaningless rambling? Do you, the socialists, socialists, capitalists, communists, etc., still think morality is irrelevant? Is self-governance impossible to achieve for all? Can we ever hope to learn and understand why the same old problematic thinking leads to more stupid people and more dependent order followers? What I've addressed so far is partially why logic and ethics matter together. If there weren't other people over the years throughout history sharing and explaining this information, then we'd all be tricked much sooner into wanting to live in totalitarian societies. I know I want to elaborate in two ways on how statism doesn't make any sense to me, but that is something else for another podcast and another video. To spread information in chunks is just as important to learning information chunks at a time. I will leave sources and extras in the description along with the video by BK Ekman. Yeah, what I don't get is how people refuse to be morally consistent. They mean well, yet they are insecure and uncomfortable, and they get angry when anyone like me says anything truthful. It's as if groups of independent thinkers, groups of people who are already willing and spreading information about how to do things in more voluntary ways, it's as if we're the dangerous ones. It's not like we're forcing anything down people's throats. And it's not like I want to enforce anything that I want onto anyone else, because that's not civilized. I debated with this socialist Christian on social media. It was an interesting communication, but also, how do I put this? It's hard. You know, it's, it's hard. Especially when people get so emotional and so oversensitive about things. I do what I can to be polite. I do what I can to be honest. And people just don't understand that logic and moral consistency can do wonders. And it's like you're trying to talk sense into such people and they react in ways that are crazy. Anger fear, untrustworthiness. It's evident how statism doesn't make sense. I've said enough for outsiders who are people who are trying to figure out what's going on or just people who might be listening, people to try to wrap their minds around. Till next time.